So good afternoon from Blackpool Pleasure Beach where I'm here to get back on some of my favourite rides in the UK. It's opening weekend 2023. I'm going to head back on Big One, Icon Revolution and all the other rides and attractions that Blackpool Pleasure Beach have to offer. Alongside that, checking out all the latest updates from the park including Valhalla which will be opening this year finally of many seasons after waiting. We're going to be finally getting back on that amazing water ride and alongside that Big Dipper is turning 100 this year uh, which is crazy to think. Three digits of fantastic wooden coaster and it's still living on here at Blackpool Pleasure Beach. That's having a huge refurbishment, so we'll go and check out those updates a little bit later on in the vlog. But before all of that, let's head over to Big One, of course, the staple ride here at Blackpool Pleasure Beach alongside Icon. Let's head over to that side of the park and get on Big One. It's opening Sunday here at Pleasure Beach, and these are the crowd levels at the entrance, and barely anyone, which is such a shame to see. And I say this every year at the opening of Pleasure Beach, there's barely anyone here. And of course, this year, that's only reinforced with them opening the same time as Autumn Towers and clashing with the opening. Usually Pleasure Beach open around February time, which means that it's one of the earliest parks, parks to open. However, this year it's clashed with Autumn Towers. And of course, Autumn Towers are opening their new attraction, Curse of the Manor. So it's gonna get loads of visitors there. So it's a bit of a same shame to see the park so empty. However, I'm sure it'll pick up towards the summertime because that's when Pleasure Beach does really thrive. And of course, this year they'll be opening Valhalla in April. Very excited for that. Of course, we'll be here to check it all out. You can see there the flying machines in the background looking very good for the 2023 season. And yeah, I really do like the opening plaza for Pleasure Beach. It's very fresh and modern. And that's the thing with Pleasure Beach. They're very good at taking their older rides and classic rides and sort of merging it with the modern 2023, 21st century era. Like these waterfalls look very modern. And then you've got next to the flying machines, which is one of the oldest rides here at Pleasure Beach. So it's nice to see that they merge them together, not getting rid of the old ones and not completely modernizing it but not leaving it to rot in the old days which is great to see with all that said let's head over to the back of the park where big one and icon are located here's a little sneak peek then at valhalla we'll be getting into all the gritty details of that a little bit later on in the vlog but until then i'm going to head over to the big one and an interesting update there from alice in wonderland all the ivy that was overgrowing onto the facade there of the ride has all been cut down which is always good to see love and care to the older attractions as i was saying earlier Oh, really nice to see that. And yeah, the pathways are looking very clear. Very empty park for opening weekend. Such a shame to see. It's always sad to see a park so empty. And I feel like I say that a lot with Blackpool Pleasure Beach. But there we go, Alice in Wonderland, one of the classic dark rides down here. And talking of dark rides, if you haven't already, go and check out the vlog from Curse at the Alton Manor. Is it really as good as everyone's saying it is? Go and check that vlog out. There's the Grand National, looking as old as ever here at Pleasure Beach. Yeah, they do a lot of retracking work to this over the closed season. So we'll take a ride on it a little bit later on and see if it really makes that big of a difference. First ride of the day then is gonna be 235 feet up in the air, the tallest roller coaster in the UK for now until Project Exodus at Thorpe Park opens in 2024 is of course the big one, Pepsi Max. Let's see how it's riding in 2023. After, of course, it's had a retrack. It's been doing that for a good few years now at Pleasure Beach, and it's coming along quite well. They've been repainting a lot of the track over there, which I'll show you after my ride. And yeah, they've also replaced loads of sections. The most recent section that's been replaced is all over there by the Big Blue and Boulevard Hotel. That sort of hill there, that's all been replaced down there and around there. And also over towards Infusion, that was all replaced as well. So lots of retracking work happening. And in the next few years, we'll probably see the near completion of the retrack work over on the big one. They do a bit each year instead of bulk doing it. Uh, for example, like Nemesis over Autumn Towers, they're completely ripping it out for a year. Uh, for Blackpool Pleasure Beach, they can't exactly do that because of course, many reasons. But also, if they do that, a huge ride for Blackpool will be down all season, uh, which doesn't really attract guests, does it? Especially when it's probably their signature ride down here at Blackpool Pleasure Beach. But with all that said, let's head on to the big one. The queue's only coming out of there. So it shouldn't be too long, probably about 20 minutes, 15 minutes until we head on the big one. Down here in the big one queue then, all the Perspex screens have actually been removed from here which were implemented, of course, because of COVID-19. And all these wood panels actually here on the bridge look quite nice and new, to be fair. I'm not too sure whether they are or not, but i tell you what is, all the repaint here on the railings looks really nice as well. Of course, still got that Pepsi Max sponsorship. There we go. I mean, this absolute mammoth of a roller coaster. 
you imagine how tall that is? Imagine how tall Project Exodus will be in 2024 over at Thorpe Park. An awesome ride there over on the big one. A fantastic ride to have here in the UK and of course in Blackpool at Blackpool Pleasure Beach. Over the past few seasons they've been doing a lot of retracking work over on that. And yeah, they did some this season uh, towards the Boulevard and Big Blue Hotel. And that section of the ride really does feel smooth. You can definitely tell where they've put in the new track sections, which is absolutely fantastic. It's on a one train service at the minute, so it's not eating the queue as Icon does, because that's currently running on a two train service, which is where I'm going to head on to next. But nonetheless, operations are really good, of course. It is the new season, they've got new staff, so a lot of staff training is happening around Blackpool Pleasure Beach. But I tell you what, Big One is running absolutely fantastic. We're so lucky to have a ride like that in the UK. Of course, it opened back in 1994 alongside Shockwave and Nemesis, and it's such a good ride, really high up in my top list lists of best UK roller coasters. Talking of my favorite UK coasters, next up, it's time to ride my absolutely favorite. It's such a good ride, opening in 2018. It's, of course, Icon. Let's go and head in the queue. The time has come to ride my favorite coaster in the UK. Well, it was last season anyway. Let's see if it can keep that stance. Icon, it's a fantastic roller coaster built by Mack Rides, of course, the same manufacturer. They'll be manufacturing Project Exodus over at Thorpe Park Resort. You see the guy on front row is absolutely loving it there. And I don't blame it. It's a fantastic roller coaster over back in 2018 here at Blackpool Pleasure Beach. Running two trains today, including the Enso train as well, which is where you can pay 15 pound for a spinning seat down here on Icon. I did that last season, it's, it's all right. It's a very pricey for that sort of experience, but it is quite good. It enhances Icon for 15 pound. Probably won't be doing it again this season. But nonetheless, let's head in the station on this fantastic ride, of course, Icon. Here's a look then at Big Dipper in early 2023. It's having loads of renovations work in order for it to be ready for its big 100th anniversary this summer. And I think if you visit on the 26th of August, you'll be able to get a good certificate saying that you rode it on its birthday. So you can see loads of scaffolding up there. The big um, onion or teardrop, whatever you want to call it, has been removed in order to have some renovations done to it. And it's having a huge repaint. It's all going to be repainted white and the rails uh, and the track being repainted red, which is great to see. And we'll go around this corner now and have a little look at the progress of the repaint. And a bit later on, head on the PBE Express to also get some closer shots of the paintwork. Here's a little side on look then at the Big Dipper having all its renovation work. As you can see there, it's been repainted a nice bright white, most of it anyway, except from this one here that needs a bit of repaint. But yeah, it looks really nice, ready for its 100th anniversary. And also, if I get a bit closer, you might just be able to see the rail was also being painted red. I'm not too sure whether you can see that. But yeah, the rails have been painted red and also the track and then the supports a nice white colour. Hopefully, I'll be able to get that shot somewhere of the rails being red. But as I said earlier, we'll head on the PB Express to get a closer look at it a little bit later on in the vlog. But as I said, it's great to see it happening because it's 100 years of the Big Dipper, one of the oldest roller coasters in the UK and here at the park. 
fantastic to see Pleasure Beach preserving it and yeah you can see loads of scaffolding on it looks really interesting of course opening summer this year no official opening date for it as of yet however it will definitely be open ready for its 100th anniversary this August where the Lapple Pleasure Beach are going to do like been doing like a celebration for it which is great to see celebrating the history of roller coasters here in the UK here's another look then at the Big Dipper from afar and it looks so weird not seeing the teardrop or runging whatever you want to call it on that on that structure it's so iconic but it's so good to see it getting the love and care that it really deserves and down here on river caves they've actually installed these glass panels these perspex here i'm not too sure why they've done it but let me know in the comments if you do know why they have just by the drop here where the boat stops and then it drops so i'm not too sure whether it's something to do with the water or potentially people getting out of the boat i'm not too sure to be honest but there we go they have been installed i'm interested to know why so let me know in the comments if you know why they've been installed. It'd be really nice if they actually brought back the little display that they used to have up here on River Caves. It was quite a long time ago now, but they used to have like a palm tree, someone sitting there. So it'd be nice to see them spruce up River Caves as it is looking a little bit old and a little bit tired now, potentially a jet wash on the rocks as well. A fantastic ride there on Icon. It's such an enjoyable ride. My favorite coaster in the UK and for good reason. It's so smooth, so enjoyable and overall it's a great experience. Um, of course Enso is running. It's a two train service today. So Enso is running which is the spinning seat on the back of Icon as I explained earlier. But essentially that does take two rows off the normal train. So if you're going to queue for the two back rows uh, then unfortunately you will be queuing a little bit longer because you're going to have to wait for the normal train to come back round. But nonetheless back no, not fully back row, I think I was about two from back row. Uh, overall, a brilliant ride there on Icon, you can't beat it. My favourite coaster in the UK. So smooth, so enjoyable, and it still looks as fresh as it did when it opened back in 2018. It's a brilliant ride, the trains are silky smooth, and I also like the wrap that they've got in it, the snakeskin sort of wrap. It looks fantastic, and overall very modern and fresh ride to quite an old Pleasure Beach, to quite an old theme park. Pleasure Beach, a few years ago, turned 125, celebrating that anniversary. But I tell you what, Icon was a great addition to the park when it opened back in 2018. Alongside that, I do want to speak about quickly the turnstiles that they have at each ride, where you scan your e-ticket, to me, that is very silly that we're still seeing this operations at Blackpool Pleasure Beach. I think it was back in 2020 when they removed the turnstiles uh, during COVID. Now, such a good year. Throughputs were so high. It was just fantastic. And then they brought them back when COVID ended. And to me, I see no reason to have those turnstiles there apart from collecting data from rides. But you don't see Orton Towers or Thorpe Park having turnstiles at each ride. I don't think it's very handy. And I think it devalues the user experience. But not only that, also put safety in jeopardy because more people are going to have their phones out meaning that they're probably just going to put their phones in their pockets when they're going to go on the rides so in my opinion you need to get rid of those turnstiles i don't see any point of them here at blackpool pleasure beach and i think it just encourages people to use phones on rides which is not a good thing of course they want you to put your phones away even in the storage compartment or either securely in a zipped pocket so those turnstiles i see no benefit to them if i'm totally honest next up though i'm gonna head on an older ride here at blackpool pleasure beach it's grand national but just after I talk about this area that could do with a bit of refurbishment here at the park. This area of Pleasure Beach has been left like this for a good few years now and essentially it's just fi this area of Blackpool Pleasure Beach has been left like this for a good few years now and essentially it's just artificial grass here and the back of the Alice in Wonderland building and it does look a little bit tacky in my opinion. I mean the back of the Alice in Wonderland warehouse doesn't look the greatest. There's lots of dents and mould all around it which is not great and this artificial grass, well, it's artificial grass really. Even a picnic benches down here would be better. But what I'm thinking is potentially new spaces for new flat rides down here. It's quite a vast space, quite a big space. Potentially a drop tower would be cool to see in this area. Um, but also some theming on the back of the Alice in Wonderland building would be very cool to see. Maybe some, just some ivy or something that doesn't make it look like you're at the back of the Amazon warehouse. But I tell you what, if Orton Towers had this space, they'd be putting a retro squad ride, wouldn't they? <laughs> wouldn't they? They'd put Plonk, you know, the Plonker waltzes right here and Plonk an Extreme right here. That's exactly what they'd do. But talking of the retro squad, go and check out the Orton Towers vlog if you haven't already, where we check out the brand new, brand new, I was about to say, cool ride at Orton Towers but it's not really it's a fun fair ride let's be honest but yeah it would be cool to see some flat rides down here at Pleasure Beach especially on this land potentially a drop tower I'm not too sure whether one would fit here or a junior drop tower you know just something to spruce up this area a little bit and yeah this area is quite nice of the park however this artificial grass area just looks a little bit plain doesn't it with all that said let's go and head on Grand National one of my favorite woodies in the UK 
I know it's a ride there on Grand National and I think the retracking work has actually done a lot to the ride in order to make it just a bit smoother. I don't think it's as rough as I knew it to be just a few years back when they hadn't done that woodwork but a lot of the woodwork and retracking work has made the experience a lot better and behind me you can see Valhalla which I'm going to check out next. Of course, opening this year, 2023, finally, after seasons of waiting, after the 7th of April, Valhalla will be opening. Here's a cheeky look of the outside with all the waterfalls on, and it has been testing. We have seen photos of the boats going around, but also in there, um, the water is flowing around the trough, which is great to see. But the outside of Valhalla is looking brilliant, if I do say so myself. Oh, there's a boat. Just went into the station there. Not too sure whether I caught it on camera. I was looking over. But yeah, look at this, it looks fantastic. All the station has all been boarded in, so it's now all inside. Um, they've extended these bits here as well, which looks fantastic. And if we walk around here, we can have a little look at the sign, which is here, there we go. Zoom in there. Wow, doesn't that sign look fantastic? I'm loving the font. And also in the background, I can hear the soundtrack, which I'll play to you uh, in just a few minutes, which is fantastic, all original score made for Valhalla which is fantastic. It preview, previously used to use the Hot Ice soundtrack which sounded okay temporarily however it's great to see it's got a dedicated soundtrack. All around here this has all been added. There we go the plants and everything. Looks fantastic. Can't wait to ride it. Wow. This is going to be the UK's best dark ride on water ride. Well I hope so anyway. With three seasons of it being closed hopefully it reopens and it's better than ever. Of course they have announced it will be opening after the 7th of April with new effects, new models and a new soundtrack to go along with it. And also up there, we'll no longer be seeing the backwards drop that has been turned forward. So there'll be three drops inside this huge show building. And also it's been blocked in up there. So you won't be able to see out, unfortunately. Uh, whether that's a good or bad thing, they could do some special effects in there. Of course, it was just a few smoke, uh, weeks ago where I saw loads of smoke pouring out of there, which shows there will be some effects world-class effects, fire will, be, fire will be included in here. It's going to be absolutely brilliant. Wow, it looks fantastic. Can't wait to head in it. Of course, we'll be here back in the next few weeks on April the 7th or whenever it opens after that. We'll be here to check it out. So good to see those waterfalls flowing again up there. Wow, it really opens this area up because for so many seasons, we had a construction wall all around here. Um, so it's so nice to see the area all open and you'll head into Valhalla just there by that huge structure. There we go, let's head around here. Fire will be pouring out of, the, of those torches that the dragons are holding out. There you go, there's the structure. That's where you're heading there. There's just a staff member standing there right now, just telling people that it will be opening after the April the 7th. And yeah, we can't get any closer, unfortunately, because of these barriers here. We're not going to hop over or anything like that. It's going to be some nice surprises inside. Nobody, and I mean nobody, has seen what's on the inside of this ride. I'm not too sure whether you can see that boat going in there. There you go, it is testing and I've just been speaking to a person who uh, runs the donut shop here. They said that it is near to completion, which is expected now. But I tell you what, I'm very excited for this. The dragons there holding up the light torches. Looks fantastic. It's looking to have much more of a darker theme. If you haven't already, go and check out the official advert Pleasure Beach posted. In my opinion, it's not the best advert, but I'm not going to dwell on that. But it's looking like a much darker theme for Valhalla and I can't wait for it to open. Honestly, this is probably the most anticipated ride for this season. I was hyped up for Curse of the Manor at Autumn Towers, but not as hyped for Valhalla to see what they've done to this. From the outside, it's looking fantastic. The waterfalls are on. The, everything about this ride looks fantastic. I can't wait to see what it has to offer. Of course, after the April the 7th, it's a bit unclear whether it's actually going to open on April the 7th, but they have said after the April the 7th, uh, for technical rehearsals. So what that means is it will be open and ready to ride. However, a few bits and pieces not might be perfect yet. However, it will be opening this year at Blackpool Pleasure Beach. And I'll tell you what, it's very exciting. Of course, all these holes here will be where the queue is. It will loop around there. Uh, and yeah, you'll just join the queue from in there. I'll tell you what, it's going to have a huge queue on opening day. But I'll tell you what, it's going to bring loads of enthusiasts and customers back to Blackpool Pleasure Beach, which was always a great thing. But there we go, Valhalla opening this year. 7th of April. 
Round here then onto the bridge, one of my favourite parts here at Blackpool Pleasure Beach because it just looks so nice. You can see all the coasters there in the background with this lovely flooring and all the nice window panes that you've got all around here with the nice patterns. Such a lovely place to stand and really appreciate this amazing park. Down here though you can see Avalanche which is where I'm going to head to next. And yes, had a nice little repaint for 2023. They did some of this last close season but they've touched up some of it around the track. And yeah, you can definitely tell the difference of the nice white track and then some of the old bobsleigh track over there towards the back. It looks really nice and white for the 2023 season. Hopefully that continues throughout the whole of the track. Hopefully the camera picks it up there. You can sort of see the transition from the new white just there and then the old white which is just there. So you can definitely tell the difference between the two. So hopefully they completely repaint the track next close season. I think it's one of those things that's just a work in progress similarly to the big one track. But I'm sure it will get done. But for now, it's nice to see that they're actually uh, actively doing it. Round towards the front entrance of Avalanche then and you can see that the lift hill has also had some nice repainting work done to it which is great to see as because Avalanche is painted white it does get dirty quite quickly with all the rain and muck and dirt and especially the rain here in Blackpool. So you can see that's been nicely repainted, nicely refurbished for 2023 and hopefully Pleasure Beach do the rest of the ride because only some of it has been repainted as we saw around the other side. So hopefully they get to do that Hopefully next close season, but you can see the queue here, it comes just out towards the stairs and just where you enter the stairway into there. So it should be only about, be about 20 to 25 minutes for Avalanche, only running one train unfortunately. We don't really need it because of how quiet it is here at Pleasure Beach. Another update down here by Avalanche is that they removed the little track, the little train ride that they used to have going down here. It literally went in a straight line, you used to pay like a pound or something and you could ride it. It used to start up there and head straight down here and yeah that looks like it's been removed, replaced by some plant pots. I think these lights were here before I'm pretty sure. But yeah they removed that, I'm not too sure why but I think it makes the area look a lot more nicer rather than having like a little pay for ride. A nice sunshine ride there on Avalanche, a brilliant bobsleigh coaster and great to go on with another friend or family member because of course you head on with two people, one in front and one at the back. Uh, and yeah, traverse through the layout. It's a fantastic coaster and looks even better with that fantastic repaint that Pleasure Beach is slowly doing and hopefully in the next few years they'll finish it. Next up though, it's time to head on the Revolution. This is one of those coasters where it goes forwards through the layout and then heads through it all backwards. A fantastic ride, previously known as the Iron Brew down here at Blackpool Pleasure Beach. Heading on to the Revolution. Yeah, I forgot to mention the opening times earlier. It's open from 11 a.m all the way through until 5 p.m. So not the longest of opening hours, however, it's only, it's only opening weekend and Pleasure Beach do do a lot of late night riding events throughout the year, fireworks, and of course we'll be checking them out later on during the years. But yeah, as you can see, the Revolution's quite high up. So if you don't like steps like this, Revolution's probably not the ride for you. However, it can seem a bit daunting. There's a handrail, if you hold on, it'll be all right. But yeah, nothing you can see there coming down. There's also the exit on this stairway tower as well. But here we are, station's just up there and looks like there's barely any queue. You get some fantastic views of Blackpool Pleasure Beach from up here in the Revolution Station. You can see Big One going there in the distance, some fantastic views. Infusion is of course open down here at Pleasure Beach. Won't be taking a ride on it today. I might do a bit later on if I feel like it. I feel like I should get at least one ride on it this season. But yeah, you can see the water has also been drained there. Probably just waiting a refill because during the closed season they do empty it so that engineers can check all the supports and do carry, carry out maintenance over the winter time. You can see some of it has been refilled there but I'm guessing they just need to refill the rest which will probably, be, uh, probably happen a bit later on in the season. Of course it's opening weekend so still a few bits that need to take place. And here's once again another look at the Big Dipper site. Next up then, it's time to head into my favorite dark ride in the UK, Wallace and Gromit. And that includes Curse of the Manor. Go and check out my honest review 
if you haven't already. Outside here as well, you can also meet Gromit. There's no Wallace, unfortunately, so he's just roaming the streets by himself, but there is a character meet and greet over there, which is fantastic to see. And yeah, I love the exterior of this ride, the facade looks really nice with all the mechanics, and of course, Wallace and Gromit over there as well. Let's head in, this fantastic dark ride. It's great for the kids, and there's even a little jump scare at the end. I won't spoil it though. Continuing with the theme of Dark Rise then, let's head on to Ghost Train. Nope, not the new one at Thorpe Park, but apparently self-proclaimed the oldest ghost train. It's got some very old effects, but it is a great ghost train after all. And they do look after the effects a lot in here, and they have done some upgrades over the past few seasons. So with that said, let's head on to Ghost Train. Bit of a queue here, so probably no more than 15 minutes. Still no picture fame, unfortunately, here in Ghost Train. That's a shame, good actually. It's always great to get back on the ghost train and interestingly there's been loads of updates over on there they've all repainted all the masks and also got the ghost up there moving again which is fantastic to see you can see in these footage this video that i've captured in the queue of that all moving and the masks moving it looks really nicely refurbished it's like the year of the ghost trains this year isn't it with fort park opening gear ghost train autumn towers and also oakwood refurbishing theirs it's the year of the ghost train um, and Blackpool Pleasure Beach refurbishing a few bits on theirs. Unfortunately, the picture frame in the actual ghost train wasn't working, which is a shame to see. But now I'm just walking around Nickelodeon. Here's a little look at Nickelodeon Streak. Of course, as I said earlier, audio would really benefit this area. Just feels really quiet and unlike a theme park not to have themed audio. Of course, Blackpool Pleasure Beach is an amusement park. However, when they've got a really nicely themed area like this, I think there should be themed audio. With all that said, Nickelodeon Streak looks to be on a walk-on. So let's head straight on. Definitely in some need of audio in here, especially. Well, Pleasure Beach are doing lots of the park up. There are a few bits that look a bit tacky, like this bit of wood that's been left up there. And also just come off Nickelodeon Street, a fantastic ride as usual. Yeah, you could just see over there towards Grand National. It does look a little bit, there's a lot of junk on the floor, lots of like gas canisters and unnecessary stuff. It'd be nice to see that area sort of cleared up and maybe some nice turf laid by Grand National, which would be nice to see because it's just really a mess around there. And it's a shame because Grand National is a good ride, but then you've just got so much junk around it, which is a bit of a shame. So nice, it would be nice to see that cleared up in the future um, as part of Blackpool Pleasure Beaches refurbishment around the park which is looking really really nice this season uh, so far it's been a really good day and it slowly closes there's only an hour left of ride time so probably going to head back to, over to the big one and do all the main rides again A dispatch on the big one. There we go, last ride of today. It's gone past five. And yeah, I think we're going to be on the last ride actually for the big one for today. On front row, of course, got a queue for this as the park's closing, might as well queue anyway. Oh, we've just missed it going off. All the sirens going as well. <laughs> the iconic sound of the big one.
So we've just had the last ride on the big one for today. Opening weekend, all finished, all complete. Everywhere's closing down and yeah, we're probably one of the last people in the park. I mean, that last ride on big one was fantastic. The operator kept squealing and press pressing the siren and then we all clapped as the train entered the station. A fantastic ride and a highlight of today as we end our day on a high here at Blackpool Pleasure Beach. Barely anyone here as well. And there we go, that is opening weekend at Blackpool Pleasure Beach. It's been a pleasure being here. Got on so many rides today, got three times Icon, three times Big One. And overall, it's been a really good day. Loads of refurbishment going around Pleasure Beach. And of course, Valhalla opening this April, which is very exciting. Also popped in the shop there, loads of new merch and loads of new ride parts. Blackpool Pleasure Beach offers some of the best retail in the theme park industry. And also, I had to get a ride part. I got like a sign uh, from their Journey to Hell event, which of course I'll be putting in my room. It looks fantastic. And yeah, looks really nice overall it's been a great day here at Blackpool Pleasure Beach barely any queues I mean 20 25 minutes barely anything if you come here at the start of the season it's never really that busy Blackpool Pleasure Beach does pick up throughout the summer season and that's really the time where they thrive and where loads of visitors come for their summer holidays but with all that said if you did enjoy the video do consider subscribing yesterday we visited Alton Towers to check out their new ride Curse at the Manor and if you haven't already there's three videos from Alton Towers one of their new retro squad ride one of their new Curse on the Manor ride and want a general park vlog and updates and with all that said I'll see you in the next video bye now